Rub up your engines! Bobcat2 says, do you still have to worry about odometer rollbacks on used cars? I saw 60 Minute where it said 40% of the cars in Houston didn't have the actual miles. Can you change digital speedometer? Relatively hard to do. I'm sure any computer nerd could figure it out. The, the main trick is somebody's got a high mileage car, they'll go to a junkyard and they'll just buy a used dash. A lot of times you can use dash for 50, 60 bucks and just install it in and the dash will show the mileage that's on the car. Most vehicles that I work on, when I check them out for customers who are buying a used vehicle, one of the main things I do is I plug my fancy $5,000 scan tool and I analyze all the data, but it also tells you the real mileage on the vehicle's computer. And unless they swap the computer out, which then you got to reprogram it, most guys aren't going to do that, the computer would have the real mileage. So if the mileage on the odometer says one thing, but the computer says another, you know, the computer's telling you the truth and it was. You can't go like in the olden days where you could get a drill and run it backwards, but even then it took hours to make it go back any amount of mileage. So, but yeah, I always try to get a little proof of the real mileage. Carfax will show you every time it was inspected and you'd see the mileage should always go up over time. You know, they can change dashes. So you want to do a little research if you are buying a used car. Here we go with GM again and our lack of quality. They're now recalling 840,000 vehicles because they can have suspension faults or even more serious. The seat belts may not work because they may not have been built correctly. Now, come on, GM. Seat belts pretty Pretty old dinosaur technology. If you can't even build seat belts correctly or whoever you're buying them from, please, maybe you shouldn't be making cars anymore. Covers 2019 to 2021, Silverado 1500s, GM 1500s, and a bunch of other ones. Now, anytime you get confused about is your car covered, all you got to do is go to the National Highway Traffic Safety Association, I believe it's .gov website, and you can type in the VIN number of your vehicle, and the government tells you free on your phone or your computer whether your car is involved in any recalls what they're for and they can give you the recall number so you can get it on your phone snap it and go and say I got this recall fix it always do it so you know you got proof these dealerships they have a tendency of trying to slide by stuff they have to do for free turns out the seat belt brackets may not be secured to the frame of the vehicle correctly now come on people all it does is bolt it to the frame it's just amazing the lack of quality control at GM these days and also 213 thousand GM vehicles have been recalled because the links on the back may rust and your wheels could fall off. 2010 to 2013, Malibus, Buick Lacrosses. Again, if you're worried about any type of recall, go to the National Highway Traffic and Safety Association here in the United States, type in your VIN number, and it'll tell you about any of these recalls because they're always coming up and you know, even I sometimes can't remember them all because there's so many of them, especially with GM vehicles. So it might be a good idea if you own a GM vehicle, let's say once a month, maybe go to that site, type in, then see if there's any new recalls. You never know what you're going to find with those things with that lack of quality control. Buffalo Man says, why do people say start stop systems are bad for your engine? Scotty says, newer cars have synthetic. Is it a myth or is it true that it wears them more? Well, actually, it does wear them more. The manufacturers claim that in the start stop systems, they're using heavier duty batteries, heavier duty starters, better bearings in the engine, stronger parts. Who knows how much stronger they are? Every time you start and stop your car that's the main wearing it doesn't matter if the engine's hot or cold the oil still goes down to the bottom of the engine and that's got to be pumped up to the top again the bearings on the cam will wear everything will wear a little bit more it's just common sense and if you've got one of those mild ones that's just using the regular starter and the regular battery to start and stop all that stuff's going to wear out faster too now take a Toyota Prius that's a different story because a Toyota Prius doesn't have a conventional starter motor it uses the giant generator motor to start the car so you don't have to worry about wearing out the battery and a starter because the battery is that humongous. The starter motor is the little starter motor with the gear. It's the big generator that spins the engine. So it doesn't really wear it out. That's pretty much perfected on the Priuses. But on the normal cars that have just the start-stop system, I don't like them. If I owned one, I would disable it. Every time I'd start the car, I'd push the button to turn it off. And me, I would, couldn't even stand that. I'd wire it so it never came back on again because it will wear your engines. Now, it's going to be slightly. It'll take a long time. But it will 
they'll wear out internally faster. There's no arguing that. Christy said, I bought a mint 2010 Highlander. I went ahead and got the spark plugs replaced. I live in New England, winters of salt. I joined Scrub a Dub Car Wash, where I get frequent washes in the winter to keep the underneath rinsed. Is there any downside to getting it washed several times? All right, here's the thing. I'm not a fan of car washes ever, because automatic car washes have dirt in them. The dirt does what's called micro scratches on your vehicle. Now, it's for the ultimate fanatics that want the perfect sheen and don't want any scratches. If you use car washes your whole life and you don't mind the way the car works, who cares? The salt will eat your car out faster than that'll put any serious scratches on your paint. Now, if they have a deal though that you can go through the car wash and it only does the under rinse, not the whole car, you can do that as much as you want. That's a fantastic idea. But the more you get your car washed, the more they're going to scratch. You can watch my whole video, why not to use automatic car washes, because the rollers and stuff that wipe it, they get dirty. And even if they clean them once in a while, which they rarely do, there's eight cars in front of you, they got all that dirt. Well, the dirt's going to be on the scrub brushes, even if they cleaned them first thing in the morning. They do micro scratches. There's no arguing that. A true fanatic will never use an automatic car wash. But you're doing it and you don't care, go ahead. Just realize the beaters will make micro scratches on your paint. If you can get it where they'll only spray the bottom, do that all the time. They won't hurt anything. Momel849 says, I got a 2017 RAV4 XLE, 76,000 kilometers. Leases them too much. Should I buy it back? I also have a 2019 Honda Civic EX with 28,000 miles and had you aspirated. I leased it. Should I buy it back too? Here's the thing. Those are both great vehicles. You could buy them back. You should never lease them in the first place. You pay more money leasing it and then buying it back. You know, you should have just bought them. You, now that you know you like those vehicles, if they ever do wear out, which they may not because they last so long, buy the one next time or buy a good used one. Don't lease it because you're taking the bump. Let's say you wanted to buy a vehicle like that. Hey, let's let somebody else lease it or buy it and then you buy it off lease you know the one's 2019 the other's 2017 that's four years old let the person with the four-year-old one take the brunt of the loss and buy it when it's cheaper don't lease it and then buy it it's, it's kind of silly because my parents did that once they said it was the dumbest thing they ever did they did it with a Toyota Corolla they bought it back and I said next time we'll just buy one so they just paid cash the next time they bought one and coincidentally it was the last car they ever bought so <laughs> White car says my 07 Corolla AE with 184,000 miles automatic has a vibration idle when it's stopped with the car in gear. There's less vibration if I shift to drive the neutral. I change mounts, belt, clean, look for vacuum leaks, help. All right, I can tell you what's wrong because my Celica does that too and it's got 240,000 miles on it. As they age, of course, the transmission and the torque converter that feeds them get worn and start to drag more. In yours, I can just about guarantee you the torque converter is a little bit weak because my Celica has a little bit weak torque converter. If it's in drive, shakes a little too much, I put it in neutral, stop shaking entirely. But it's done that for eight years. I don't care. I'm not going to pull the transmission off, buy another expensive torque converter, pay for some nonsense like that. If I'm sitting for a while, I just shift it into neutral. No big deal, you know? It's going to hurt anything. But that's what happens as they age. The torque converters, they're supposed to make it still idle good. They have to have a certain amount of slippage so that runs smooth enough when it's in drive. If there was no slippage, and you were in drive, it would stall the engine out, right? But as they age, they drag a little bit more, there's less slippage, and then they shake more. It doesn't mean anything. I've seen on those Corollas all the time. Just live with it. Won't hurt anything. And like I said, I've been driving my Celica that way for eight years. Still does about the same, and it still runs fine. The Master 88YT is a 93 Mustang Cobra R a good investment. I'm looking to buy one that is fully sorted. Yes, it can be. You want to make sure it's checked out correctly, because if it's all original equipment, then it's worth a lot of money. If it's been highly modified, it actually is worth less. Depends on what you want or what you want to do. I had a guy buy one last year. You know what he did? He bought it and it came with everything. The guy put new stuff on, but he saved all the old stuff. So he saved the original transmission. He saved the original engine. And as long as you got all those parts, if somebody wants to buy it as a collector's item, you got all the parts, they can put it together any way they want. You want to drive it a little harder and modify it? You can go ahead. Just make sure you keep all the original original parts. And since those are rust buckets, make sure a mechanic looks closely to make sure the frame isn't rotten. Those frames on those things rotted out like mad if they're up north like in Detroit. JC Buffalo Gal says, recommend a Ford Transit, a Nissan NV or Chevy Express GMC Savannah cargo van for reliability. Well, out of those, I'd have to say be kind of a toss up between the Ford Transit and the Nissan. Now, if you're getting a Ford Transit that had a diesel engine, that's probably a better one. But if you don't 
don't like the, and you want gasoline engines, you're probably better off with a Nissan. Don't even think about the GM stuff. It's made like crap. Between the Nissan and the Ford, it all depends. Like I say, if you want a gasoline engine, I'd go to Nissan. But if you want a diesel engine, I'd go with a Ford. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.